It's the start of June. The Eagles should be coming towards the end of their OTA period and heading in towards a three-day mandatory minicamp. And realistically, it's our first chance to get a glimpse of this year's draft class. But instead... We're all here watching top 10 alien conspiracy theories about washing up liquid at 4 in the morning. Talking from experience, it doesn't mean we can't look back at last year's rookie class to see how they will be expected to step up in 2020. And when looking at the players drafted by the Eagles last year, I think it's safe to say there is some weight of expectation as they each head into their sophomore campaign. So this is just a short little video taking a look at each of those players, how they fared in 2019 and what we can expect from them in 2020. As always guys, if you are new around this channel, it will be amazing if you could drop a like like should you enjoy this content and hit that subscribe button. We are under 100 subscribers away from hitting 20,000. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that continue to support this channel. And as a thank you, we'll keep trying to grind out the best content we can and work on some exciting competitions and opportunities to bring all of you together in the coming months. And don't forget, if you want to get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage, you can do so from myself and all of our writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. It's only right that we start things off with last year's first round pick, Andre Dillon, who has now had the left tackle torch passed down to him from Jason Peters after he was released this offseason. Dillard will now be responsible for protecting the blind side of Carson Wentz for years to come. And there is a weight of expectation that as a former first round pick going into his second year, he's got to be ready to hold down that fort. There is no insurance policy behind him now. Halapulavati Vitae is with the Detroit Lions. Jordan Mailata may not be ready to become a backup just yet. And while Matt Pryor is a swing guard, I don't think they've got someone that is ready with NFL experience to step up should Andre Dillard go down. And on that note, you get to the debate about whether or not the Eagles should bring back Jason Peters. And I do think that's a double-edged sword because if you do bring him back, one, will he realistically want to come back on a cheaper deal when he's likely been offered more money for a starting role elsewhere? And B, it can't exactly do much for the confidence of Dillard who knows that Peters realistically is a threat that if Dillard makes a mistake, they've got this Hall of Fame bound tackle, this ageless wonder that could snatch back that role at any given point. So from a mental standpoint, point of Dillard while the extra coaching the extra mentorship would help I think he should have enough of that from guys like Lane Johnson and I don't think Jason Peters would be the perfect guy to bring in as a backup but in terms of Dillard's play last year I was relatively impressed I thought he showed a significant amount of promise through a string of appearances in his rookie season that included very impressive outings against both the Buffalo Bills and the Chicago Bears of course, there was whatever the hell happened against the Seahawks, where he was oddly thrown to the wolves at right tackle. But overall, I think he handled himself fairly well and showed plenty of upside for the seasons to come. In terms of an expected step up, there may be none bigger than the leap from backing up a Hall of Fame tackle to manning that left tackle spot for good and making it your own. So if we're talking players who need to take a big leap next year, Andre Dillon is going to have a huge weight on his shoulders in that regard. But if we're talking breakouts, then look no further than Miles Sanders because he is now officially the star of the Eagles backfield as evidenced by the team's lack of intent to really replace Jordan Howard with a back of similar reputation. Although they have added ones of similar style, elevating Sanders to be the jack of all trades and the star of the show. We all know the expectation now. Sanders himself has voiced an intent to go out and become league MVP and whether or not he does that, hearing such confidence after an astounding rookie breakout can only be seen as encouraging. But just how explosive was that breakout? Let's not forget that Sanders was very much lost in the muddle behind Jordan Howard. He was decimating the first half of that season. But from week 7 and beyond, Sanders was one of just 8 running backs to average 5 plus yards per carry. Additionally, only he and Aaron Jones were the only two to do so while having 250 plus receiving yards. Which just goes to showcase how dynamic he was. By the end of the year, he was one of six players to have 500 plus rushing yards and receiving yards, joining Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Leonard Fournette, Austin Eckler, and of course, Christian McCaffrey. And between the Seattle game and week 17, he averaged 4.8 yards per carry on 92 attempts and was even more lethal in the passing game, averaging 6.8 yards per catch adding four touchdowns to the mix. The man was an absolute machine. 
Now he won't be expected to take a monumental step because he's already a vastly underrated back. Someone that is just decimating in every sense of the word. What he will be expected to do is maintain the current trend of becoming one of the league's most exciting dynamic threats at the position, a step of which he seems almost destined to take. AJ Ortega Whiteside, the second round pick who is often overlooked due to the total rebuild the wide receiver position experience this offseason, but make no mistake, he'll be expected to be part of the rotation. And here's why. I said this a little bit in yesterday's video. With Wentz being so prolific in the red zone, the Eagles will need a jump ball specialist, especially with Olshon Jeffrey's tenure all but coming to an end and an injury that seems likely to rip him of at least half a season. The Stanford product has a huge opportunity to make up for lost time and put clamps on the X position while expectations aren't overly high after a disappointing rookie year. The opportunity to take a quantum leap may be the highest of the group. He's going to have a new wide receiver coach, he'll be fully healthy, not expected to learn the playbook in a million different languages languages and more importantly he's going to have so much attention on that wide receiver position that otherwise would be on him. There's going to be so much speed to worry about that he can kind of go under the radar in a very winnable matchup and do some damage. So I say don't kind of overlook JJ Ortega Whiteside. He may not have the most explosive second season of any wide receiver from that class but I definitely think he could be in line for a few hundred yards and a few touchdowns because of the way this offense is shaped and it's reliance on a play of his skill set. All it needs is a little bit of tender loving care and I think we will see a very different J. Jewel in 2020. Sharif Miller just saw two special team snaps all year as a rookie. Oh, that's all he got, all year. And while it's difficult to compare him to Josh Sweat, both were fourth round picks and Sweat played in 68 defensive snaps as a rookie. And while many of them came against the Saints in a blowout, it's notable in contrast considering the second year breakout the FSU product enjoyed. Now I do think that Miller has a unique chance here. He'll have a new defensive line coach to try and squeeze the best out of him and a real sense of depth of the position is lacking and there are long-term questions to answer. Derek Barnett is going to be into a fifth-year option very soon. We're going to see Brandon Graham seemingly get towards the end of his deal and there's no Vinnie Curry right now, meaning that behind those first two players is a complete world of uncertainty. You've got Josh Sweat and then anyone. It could be an absolute free-for-all. So Miller really does have a chance to solidify himself as part of the rotation and if he can start to develop more than just a bull rush in 2020, I think he could be a very, very under the radar look for a breakout player. And Clayton Thorson, I mean, look, he's not on the Eagles anymore. You know what I'm going to do. You probably don't want me to do it, but I feel like I owe it to everyone to bring it out just one last time. Da -da 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 Clayton Dawson. And that brings us to the end of the video. What do you think about this rookie class? Who do you think from the 2019 draft class will have the biggest impact on the Eagles in 2020? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy lives to watch this content. It really does mean a lot to us. We'll see you very soon for an episode of Eagles Film Room.